I am Anthony from HashesNet, and you're watching 10 Questions. Today, I'm here with James of the Watchtower Database. I will ask 10 questions about his experience as a YouTuber, as well as let him onto that path. Hey, James. Hi. How's it going? So, um, you actually run your channel with two others, uh, Matt and... Mm -hmm. I want to say... Why do I keep wanting to say Ben? It's not Ben. No, you're close. It's Ted. Ted, okay. <laughs> I don't no, know why... He... I don't, he's been when called I think, Tim or Terry, or it's he's gotten everything at this point. Oh, so because if his name was Terry, I'd be I'd be telling people his last name was McGinnis. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're gonna go full DCAU, right? Uh, so I have uh, ten questions. I typically ask everybody these same ten questions. Um, if we have an opening, I might have a follow up for you. So we're sure, gonna first no start with what entertained you while you were growing up. Batman. <laughs> just batman uh, i mean because well, when um when batman the animated series came out i was uh, like 15 years old or 16 or something like that so yeah i was one uh, uh, <laughs> wow yeah, uh sorry, yeah because yeah. i yeah. when i was little it was um ninja turtles and transformers but i really yeah, I mean, did I, enjoy batman when it came out in 92 because it came out with like x-men and uh just a whole mess of like really great 90s spider-man the 90s sure. series spider-man oh, it was such a great time for for yeah. action cartoons yeah definitely um at the time i know you know there was stuff like gargoyles and ninja turtles and stuff like that on but i almost never watched that it never really interested me um i've watched them now and and enjoy them a lot more than i did then but when it when i was a kid we didn't have a lot of uh like primetime tv channels we had like the most basic cable package we one day we got the disney channel and that was like the biggest deal ever i could watch the aladdin animated series and i could watch timon and pumbaa and all that kind of <laughs> stuff and that was awesome all of a sudden but like most of my uh media intake i guess at the time was uh like the clamshell vhs disney movies all the you know pinocchio and fantasia oh, and all the that ones stuff. where you open up the case and they smell so good you just put your nose <laughs> yeah, in it oh, like i love childhood. that weird plastic smell <laughs> yeah and so uh, and then eventually among that uh there there's still a video store here in the town i live in and at the time they were in a much smaller building uh, and the kids section was full of all that kind of stuff but i picked up mask of the phantasm one day uh and then i think I probably rented that like every week for like six years. <laughs> Just Which is funny. It, it is time. it is still sitting downstairs in that big old case yeah, uh, on the shelf. I uh, haven't <laughs> haven't watched it in like, I don't know, what is it like 10, 20 years now? Yeah. Uh, but it's still down there. And occasionally I, I'll go and just open it up and go, oh, yeah. <laughs> smells like Kevin Conroy in here. <laughs> But yeah, uh, no, that was that was my uh, that was what, how, what I kept renting over and over to the point where my parents uh, eventually, like, I guess whatever you would call pirated it at the time of hooked two VCRs together and taped it onto a new tape for me because they were tired of paying the video store <laughs> so often for the for the video. Uh, and yes, yeah, so I would watch that all the time. And I eventually got the uh, Batman Superman movie on VHS also and would wore that one out all over the place. Um, so that was kind of my DCAU introduction. The rest of, this, of the stuff I would watch is all the kind of, you know, just whatever was on Nickelodeon or Cartoon Network or whatever at the time. And yeah, that kept me busy. <laughs> so what made you decide to start a YouTube channel? Because you, you seem to be the face of your channel. So I feel like you're the one that started it. Um, I am the one that started it technically. Yeah. I mean, me and Ted uh, started it together basically back in 2015 um, as kind of a way to um, have a uh, receptacle <laughs> for DCAU stuff as a kind of uh, in the background thing, because we were working on a an encyclopedia DCAU website, uh, like everything DCAU ever, which we are technically still working on. It's just <laughs> taking its time a lot more now because we're so focused on the channel and everything. Um, but I had my own... Uh, YouTube channel JTS Entertainment, which is still up on YouTube uh, for uh, since like 2006, like middle of high school for me. Sorry to keep making you feel older. <laughs> but, uh, and uh, we did a bunch on over there. It was me and all my high school friends doing comedy sketches and movie reviews and stuff for a long time. And that kind of never went anywhere. No one was ever watching the videos, you know, a video over there was lucky to get the amount of views that a watchtower video gets in a day in like 10 years so that 
that was kind of like all over the place. Um, but eventually I kind of, I, I started making a movie called Vi Reality uh, in 2013 and decided I'm going to put a pause on my YouTube channel because I really need to focus on getting this movie done and no one's watching this stuff anyway, so it doesn't matter. But then as soon as Ted and I kind of decided we need, we're going to start our webcomic, uh, Legacies of the DCAU, we're going to start this website, we're going to have this DCAU, you know, compendium is what we were calling it at the time, but no one knows what that word means. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, and I have so, stories about compendiums back in the yeah. 90s. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, all this stuff's from back in the 90s, basically. Uh but yeah, that was uh, that was the start of the channel, um, and that one took off a lot quicker. Um, we, it wasn't until our yellow bat suit video and our Batman and Harley Quinn videos in 2017 uh, that people really started, you know, latching onto it and noticing it. And oh my gosh, you guys are so funny! All oh, these videos are so great. I, you know, what all that stuff. Um, and yeah, we've just kept it up from then and done our best to. Uh, to stay relevant and stay entertaining. We brought Maddie on in 2016, I think, uh, to do a discussion about uh, whether Teen Titans was in the DCAU or not, the Teen Titans cartoon from 2003, I want to say. Um, and he had previously run, Maddie had run a Tumblr blog called DCAU Timeline, where he was figuring out the DCAU timeline. Uh, so we brought him on to do videos about that stuff. And then he's also stuck around ever since. And it's been really fun to build it up uh, more and more from there and branch out into other topics or other uh, DC related stuff and just kind of see throwing throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, the DCAU uh, stuff has done best so far. Yeah, because uh, last year, Matt said he was done with the timelines, at least for now, because it's driving him nuts. He's so meticulous about it. No <laughs> wonder he looked like at the end he needed a straight jacket. He was just, he uh, should be rocking in the corner, <laughs> bald up, just... You know, yeah, well, he keeps growing it, his hair out too, so it's not helping with his uh, his lunacy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he's good. Uh, the the Vanishing Point show that he was doing for a while um, just kind of became difficult to keep up with. You know, we we'd be trying to do all this stuff in the background, and we've been doing all these videos lately that are, have kind of an interconnected narrative to them um, that take a lot more uh, time to script and storyboard and film and all this stuff. Uh, that it became just kind of a nuisance to every other week. Like, uh, I guess I'll talk about the Riddler now. I don't know. What should I talk about about the Riddler? I have to do something. And it, that got just kind of tedious. So we we have been moving away from the, the shows, so to speak, and more toward just kind of broad uh, weekend topics that are longer and more have more punch to them, I guess. Mm. Meanwhile, at the Hall of Justice... Because uh, last year, uh, actually, I think it was the end of the last episode of the Timeline videos that Matt was doing, you guys actually said, hey, you have any ideas? I remember I submitted, I think, to Twitter some ideas because uh, there was a couple of things I was trying to do. I just couldn't do um, <laughs> like effective, like top tens and stuff, because those seem to be like really big gets. Right. For, yeah. Like, I feel like you guys could push out a top ten every day for a while, but then you will burn <laughs> well, out and then the channel won't post anything for months. Yeah. Well, so when we started the channel, that was actually on the list of like, you know, I had to put something in the description of the channel, like, what what is this? And so it said something, you know, like videos on all things DC, uh, DC Animated Universe, uh, you know, deep dives, timeline, blah, 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 top tens was listed on there. But we went like two, three, four years. We didn't do a single top ten video. And, you know, it was just sitting there on the list glaring at me going, when are you going to do this? And we kept coming up with like, okay, we'll do a top 10 Batman the Animated Series episodes. And it would just kind of peter away and never happen. Well, okay, we'll do a top 10, uh, you know, like we did a, a Bat Suits video and a Superman Suits video and stuff that were sort of top 10-y, but they were basically just listing these things exist. <laughs> uh and eventually we decided to just make a joke out of it. And for our 100th video, we did the top 10 baths of the DCAU. 
So it's anytime that people have taken a bath or a shower <laughs> on screen and just went just completely bonkers with it for no reason other than just to be just to kind of make fun of ourselves for never having done a top 10 video. And that is still the only top 10 video <laughs> that we have done for the channel. I was just to say, because so. what you should do um, is, is, and I think it might be meta, is your top 10, top 10 DCAU videos. <laughs> yeah, and it's just number one, top 10 baths. <laughs> number two through 10 nothing <laughs> yeah exactly the ones we tried to do and never did <laughs> uh have people vote hey which idea did you like <laughs> yeah uh, so w what was your first uh official dcau video then uh i think other than the first video that we put that was just kind of a you know what is the watchtower database um we did a video about kevin conroy uh, under the title Casting Call, which I think was something that we were intending to do a lot more of a lot quicker as kind of like a just spotlight on various voice actors. Um, we ended up doing one on Michael Ironside eventually and Susan Eisenberg a few months ago. Um, and we have another one uh, in the pipeline that Ted has already recorded uh, for Mark Hamill, uh, but we've just been kind of waiting for a week where you know, oh, emergency, we don't have anything ready, put out the Mark Hamill casting call because it's basically ready to go kind of a thing. Um, but the, yeah, that was a, a history of Kevin Conroy's um, upbringing and where he went to school and what he did before being Batman, how being Batman has impacted his life since and all that kind of thing. Um, and it wasn't really that much of a, we were kind of referring to, I've, I've referred to them several times as before people started catching on to our channel, we were mostly doing Wikipedia articles as videos. And they were just very informational, very, you know, not boring necessarily, but a little more dry, a little more, um, here are the facts, goodbye, see you next time. <laughs> and versus now we, we inject a lot more of our uh, personalities and humor and stuff into it, which I think people have uh, stuck with a lot better than just Kevin Conroy did these things and then he did these things or, you know, whatever. But yeah, that was the, the first official video, I think. Cause now you kind of do time travel where you send Matt yeah. off to just distant <laughs> futures and then uh, forget about him for a few episodes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, even compared with, uh, we, we started doing the story related videos in 2018 uh, where I, mean, I think it actually, I guess maybe slightly earlier than that, uh, it was kind of by accident at first we were just making a joke about uh i want i really wanted to do the timeline video for uh batman and harley quinn but maddie had been doing all the timeline videos up till that point so i said so we wrote into the video that i had maddie locked up in my basement and that i wouldn't let him out like no matter what like you can hear him muffled behind the door going like hey you said i get to do the timeline videos and i'd be oh, i don't know what you're talking about kind of this thing <laughs> And uh, that went, that was just kind of a joke for that one video. But then we just kept rolling with Maddie is locked in my basement and I won't let him out. I just force him to make videos for the channel. And, you know, he makes all the vanishing point videos from down in the basement and this sort of narrative going on the whole time that has evolved from random joke to, yeah, an entire interlocking. There's Maddie has gone to the future. There's alternate universe us is stuck in a white void between the panels of a comic. There are I am witnessing a digital clone of myself that has been doing all the Willet Cannon videos and he's about to escape the computer in the next episode and all this stuff. And it's just like this crazy over the top, like way more cinematic than it started out uh, thing. And but it's it's a lot of fun doing that stuff because you know, it kind of kind of keeps people coming back wanting to, you know, oh, is this video going to be part of the story? Usually not. <laughs> but when it is, it's like, oh, my God, it's the next part. And so, yeah, that's always fun. Okay, so what trends have you seen change with online content creation since starting your YouTube channel? Now, um, I, I, there are other uh, people who make uh, DC animated video, related videos <laughs> of some type. Uh, honestly, I think since you guys have introduced storylines, you've actually upped the quality. I think it's made yours a lot more entertaining than some of the dry <laughs> facts presented in the other ones. Because uh -huh. uh, occasionally you will see, um, 
I'm not going to name people. Uh, one guy's videos are simply him reading through the comic book at you. And right. yeah, so that it's kind of like, but I mean, I, I buy the comic book. Why do I need you to explain it to me? I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> right, uh, there's another guy who, who kind of just takes the smallest thing and creates some type of, or at least he tries to initiate some type of conversation about it. And, and that, that's kind of boring too. I mean, cause you start making up, well, what if this happened? What if that happened? Yeah. I, if I want to know alternate scenarios about things, I'll start reading up elsewhere, El Elseworld comics yeah. for the people <laughs> who are watching Elseworld. It is the DC version of Marvel's what if. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, anyway, uh, so what has changed? I mean, obviously you've gotten better at the storytelling. Uh, you've introduced, uh, some new, elements i guess you kind of just uh, suspended timelines what else do you have going on that is different from when you started well um with what you're talking about with the people you know the other channels that are talking about similar topics i think there is an audience for everything um like for instance uh, our our buddy jay's reviews um, he's edited a few of our Vanishing Point videos, and he we've done several like crossovers with his channel. Um, his content for DCAU stuff is almost entirely just going episode by episode and talking about you know this is what happens in the episode. Here's how I felt about it. Next episode and goes through it. And it's a little it's a little more involved than that. But when he does that stuff, it's very different from how. You know, we if we ever do a review of something, it's usually on our podcast or it's um, a kind of like we've we've done movie reviews for we just put one out for the Red Sun movie. Uh, we did uh, ones for Teen Titans Go vs. Teen Titans and Wonder Woman Bloodlines and a couple of DCAU movies that have come out. Um, those have been kind of purposeful, like come up, trying to come up with as as much to say about it as possible. Um, but I think, yeah, I think there's an audience for all types of, uh, content really. I mean, <laughs> not even just DCA, DCAU content, but like, you know, everything imaginable pretty much. Um, and so I think what's, what we've tried to do, I guess, is just both stay relevant to what's currently happening in comic books, comic book movies uh and the animated movies that have come out um uh, trying to cover as much as possible with that uh over the channel and the podcast and then you know say like for instance wonder woman 84 is coming out on in june i believe and so we're trying to time a wonder woman history kind of timeline video uh for that um that's a pretty basic you know this thing is happening in pop culture so it's going to be what people are searching for so we should do a video about that um, aside from that, I think YouTube itself uh, has grown a lot, even in the last couple of years, but especially, certainly since it started in 2005, um, you know, back, back then I was doing videos for my other channel and just throwing stuff out there that was completely original, all these weird, wacky characters. I'm actually looking at a desktop right now of like nine, ten original characters from my comedy sketches that are all in a big, like, kind of triangular Justice League formation. <laughs> Maybe I'll send that to you and you can put it on screen. <laughs> but uh, uh, that stuff, it, it's always kind of funny how, you know, we're putting that kind of thing into our videos for Watchtower Database, but it's mingled, it's mixed in with the, um, okay, so this is a video about when does Sub-Zero happen during Batman the Animated Series? by the way, Maddie is stuck in the future and here's his floating head in a jar or whatever. Like, if we had just done a video like that and maybe nobody would see it, but kind of combining them to make sure that the effort we're putting into that kind of thing is noticed and seen by the people that are drawn to the videos because of the DCAU content. I think that that's a little different from like the time period uh, earlier YouTube when you had uh, people, I mean, a lot of them are still around, but people like uh, Nostalgia Critic uh, comes to mind or other uh, channels that do kind of narrative based reviews like that. You know, he'll sit there and tell you his opinions on everything, but it's mixed in with uh, original story elements and stuff like that. 
Um, I think a lot of people, I don't want to say got annoyed by that, but I think, I think at some point it, it becomes, you know, okay, I, I'm, I've seen this. He's going to be, he's going to be doing the same wacky thing every time. So we kind of tried it. We try our best to keep it fresh and new every time instead of just falling into the same um, tropes over and over again. But I'm sure that saying that, that we probably do fall into the same tropes over and over again. <laughs> How's that saying go? Um, go with what works. Mm hmm. Uh, and yeah, for I mean, anybody who's watching, Sub Zero is a Mr. Freeze um, right. Batman the animated series movie, <laughs> not the Mortal Kombat character. It was no Mortal Kombat crossover. Yeah. Also, when yeah, does Sub Zero happen during Batman? Right. Um, so Kombat. yeah, because Ted did the Red Sun review, but he also, which I really enjoyed, was he crossed or compared it with the comic book. That was me actually. <laughs> you did it? I thought it was Ted. He uh, he may have. I don't think he covered Red Sun for. If you you might be thinking of his graphic content show. Oh, it could have because uh, it was a comparison but, between uh, the comic book and the movie and what the differences yeah. were. Yeah, that was me. Oh. <laughs> but okay. I can take my glasses well, off and be. I can be I don't, bad, I, don't, bad, I swear. Whatever. It was, uh, yeah, whatever. It's fine. All of you have beards or something. Maybe I, it's okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the one with the glasses. <laughs> That's okay. I don't blame you. Uh, I swear. Well, I was, you know, there we are. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get one of those. What is that? Where they, they switch your face with another person. Uh, yeah. They swap. Yeah. Yeah. I put Ted in the video just for my own. <laughs> we did do a video about Shazam where it's uh, – Maddie's it's supposed to be Maddie but it starts off with me pretending to be Maddie and then I say Shazam and then I turn into Ted and then he says Shazam and then he finally is Maddie <laughs> now because uh, yeah. in the uh, in the one future episode of Earth 12 uh there was somebody entirely not you playing you <laughs> what are you talking about that's me from the future <laughs> it's not my dad it's me <laughs> okay so uh what do you think brings people to your YouTube channel? Now, I, I I do personally think it's the fact that you guys have evolved into a underlying theme in your storytelling, because I think that takes the pieces a lot further than they were if you were just providing dry fact or maybe mm -hmm. opinions. But uh, I really like the cinematic approach. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I know I think there's def there must be people that come back just for that stuff, uh, which is great. Uh, we try for an, I mentioned this before we started recording, but for anyone watching, if you wanted to find the entirety of the story that we've done so far, we have a playlist on the channel called I've Got Maddie in My Basement, uh, which has from start to finish. Also, about halfway through, there is a video called like the story so far, part one or something like that. And that is um, the first chunk of the story, just the story pieces without all the other, you know, timeline or whatever stuff from the videos so that you can get caught up quicker. But um, yeah, that's good to hear because I always kind of assume that it is, uh, I think the, I think the majority of it is people come back for the DCAU or DC animation or whatever uh, topics and then discover the other elements or they find us in the first place because of that stuff and then go like, Oh, I like these guys as people. Um, I really enjoy, you know, the original stuff that they're doing and, and I agree with them on this and that, and that's why they subscribe or come back or whatever. Um, and which by the way, we're trying to get to a hundred thousand subscribers this year. So you, sh you should go subscribe to the channel. I already, well, watching. personally I have, uh, I've yes. subscribed with both my accounts. So you got oh, two yeah. from me. <laughs> it's just like when yeah, I I'm vote. Yeah, <laughs> I'm subscribed with my with my like three YouTube accounts too. So um, be careful, five. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, like for instance, late uh, recently we put out a video uh, all about the new Batman: The Adventures Continue comic that's coming out. Yeah, that confused week. me because I thought you were talking about like they were rebooting the series or something. I'm like, I know that. Well, so that was kind of the. The hope <laughs> is that people would think that that's what the video is about if they hadn't heard of the comic. Because we actually, the, the tweet by DC's Twitter or DC Nation or whatever it is, um, only has a few hundred or a couple thousand um, likes and retweets and stuff on it. Our video about uh, the comic that's coming up and everything we know about it so far uh, has like 
I think it just got to like 110,000 views or something by the, by the time we're recording this, which everything that we put out, I'm always comparing to the likes of like PewDiePie and every. I think everybody does that at this point. Why, why would you torture yourself? Themselves. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Maybe not even that. Maybe something like, uh, I don't know, like Comic Storian or Comic Drake even. Like he's always a little bit ahead of us on everything. Um, but uh, so that video did really, really well. Um, there are a handful of people that like, what the heck? This is, I thought you meant that cartoon was coming back. This is so stupid, clickbait, blah, blah, blah. even though the title of the video has the title of the comic in it. <laughs> so, like, if you knew it existed, that's what you're watching. But either way, it's a little bit on purpose because to get people to watch it. But hopefully that kind of stuff, I think, is what, you know, really brings people in and then they stay for us as people. I hope. Anyway. If only there was a way to go on the internet and look up if what things are just just some yeah. type of engine, some type of search engine. Yeah, yeah, like a Google or something. Yeah, yeah Yahoo. <laughs> <laughs> Yahoo. So you're telling me there are no shields? Ah, uh, like no man. Well, what does it have? Like a groovy flux capacitor, and it can travel anywhere through time and space. Does it come in black? Uh, okay, so you did mention um, in, you have some future content uh, kind of just waiting in the wings uh, with based around the Wonder Woman, based around Mark Hamill. Is there any other features or, or content that you, you can talk about right now that's coming in the future? Um, what I'm working on right this second or like on either end of this talk here is uh, – a video for Sunday. Hopefully, it's the video that's coming out this Sunday. Um, it doesn't matter for whatever you're releasing this. But oh, yeah, this uh, is coming out at the end of April. Yeah, yeah. But what I'm working on right now is a Green Lantern Corps uh, complete history of the Green Lantern Corps, everything we know from the DC animated universe. Because um, on a surface level, it seems like we probably we really didn't get that much information about their history and who all is in the core and all this stuff. But if you look at each episode they appear in and glean from that based on like comic book information about the same stuff, there's a lot more there uh, that we can piece together. So like the script that we just finally finished uh, after like three revisions um, is about 12 pages long and typically a page equals about two minutes. So the video is going to be pushing half an hour, <laughs> but it's a lot of stuff. I think that's also something that's always interesting to see is if people click on you know a nine minute video because oh the, i'll get over i'll get through that real quick or if they'll click on the half hour video because they know like okay i'm in for a ride like i'm ready for this like a lot of the will it canon videos are you know 20 30 minutes um when we put out a video called uh the bat suit conundrum uh all about batman's costumes and how they don't make any sense. Uh, that was 18 minutes. And at the time, that was the longest video we'd put out. And I was so worried, like, no one is going to watch this. That's the second most video, most viewed video on the channel. <laughs> so it's pro it's a proven <laughs> method, I guess. Um, besides the Green Lantern one, um, there's a handful of other random stuff. But we are working toward uh, the three part finale to our story that we've been talking about here. Um, one of the first part of that i'll say is a poison ivy centric video that we've been teasing since uh god like early 2018 late 2017 uh we when we talked about the batman and harley quinn movie in great detail uh we were talking about you know is poison ivy a person is she a plant is she a plant person what is going on with poison ivy in this universe and since then, we keep coming up to like a point where it would make sense to make that video and then deciding, nah, I think it'll make sense later. You know, there's something Poison Ivy related coming up that we should time it with or something like that. And then, but we're finally work like I read and watched every single Poison Ivy DCAU appearance, which is a list of like 180 things or something like that. <laughs> Uh, it's a lot more than you'd expect. Uh, she's in a lot of like the tie-in comics and, and stuff like that. Um, and wrote down like every little bit of information possible about her that could lead to 
any assumptions of what's going on with her body chemistry and plantness and all this stuff. Um, so we're finally putting that out to tie in with the next part of the story, which is my Willa Cannon self coming out of the laptop uh, and escaping his digital prison, as it were. So <laughs> that'll, oh, that'll... Meta, okay. <laughs> Maybe I'm the digital James. Ooh. <laughs> so what changes would you like to make if you had unlimited resources? So like, is there a dream project you love to do, but you just can't because something's stopping you? Um, there are a handful of things. The first thing that came to mind when you said that immediately was to, if we had enough money where Maddie, Ted and I, and our composer, Adam, uh, and uh, probably a couple other people could all be in the same physical location, like a studio or something together. I think that's like top priority, um, with unlimited resources. Um, I mean, wait, you make... guys live like generally on the West coast, right? Or no, two of you are on the West coast and one of them's here. I'm yeah. Not, so yeah. yeah. So Ted, Ben, Tim, whatever you want, James, whatever you want to call him. <laughs> he You're lives James. in North Car Yeah, <laughs> he lives in North Carolina. Ted, uh, Maddie lives in Seattle, and I'm here in in uh, the Pacific Northwest, Oregon. Um, we are, you know, Ted, or Maddie and I are, are decently close to each other, but we're pretty spread out. Um, and even you know that short distance of here to Seattle is. Uh, inconvenient enough that we have to, you know, plan, okay, Maddie's going to come over here on this exact weekend and film this thing and whatever. If we were all in the same, you know, warehouse studio space or something like that, that would be completely ideal to do way, way more of these story videos way quicker. It, Ted and I could work on the Legacies webcomic right next to each other, just all sorts of stuff like that, that the internet is amazing for this sort of thing. I would not be working on any of this literally if if it didn't exist. But yeah, I, you know, I wouldn't have these connections with these guys uh, if not for the internet. But it's still very limiting to not be in the same physical place. We have to schedule meetings. We have to, you know, we have a Facebook group chat, but that's that we use every day. But it's still, you know. I message Ted on there and he won't respond until five hours later because it's actually, you know, two in the morning for him or something like that. <laughs> Meanwhile, at the Hall of Justice. Okay, so you have content other than YouTube on the internet. Uh, what mm -hmm. do you have and where can people find it? Like, uh, I think pretty much as we said off camera, everything ends in DCAU Watchtower. Yeah, that's the, that's the social media handle and the Patreon. Um, our legacies of the DCAU webcomic. That's something that we've been working on for a while. It is our own basically fan fiction of what happens between the end of justice league unlimited and the beginning of Batman beyond, because there is about a 40 ish year gap, yeah, like 35 or so year gap of just, I don't know, like a handful of things Fill that we know. Happen. But yeah. Like we know Batman quits in 2019. We know um, a handful of other, you know, the plasma rifle was invented in 2005, like random things like that. But the majority of stuff is very question mark. So we're coming up with all these different story ideas. We're going to touch on the near apocalypse of 09, which was something that was brought up in the show that had to do with Rachel Ghoul, but that's all we know about it. We have no idea what happens. So we're kind of making up our own thing. Um, all sorts of stuff that I think people will be really excited to see. It's a very slow process creating the comic. We only, we come out with maybe two or three issues maximum a year uh, because it's me and two other artists uh, for the most part doing it for free on our own time. And Ted is writing all the scripts and he's at several issues ahead right now, but uh, still, you know, it takes a lot of time to, with me editing every video that you see on the channel, <laughs> I have to find the time to also draw the comic. Um, what else do we have? Uh, we have Facebook, a, Twitter. Uh, yeah, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram are all at DCAU Watchtower. Um, we have a Teespring store for our merchandise, um, which is also teespring.com slash stores slash DCAU Watchtower. So, uh, <laughs> so before we get on to the, because there's a second part here, um, do you wish to mention anything else about your YouTube channel? Uh, subscribe.
I, I have, because uh, we discussed this uh, off air, um, I, I want to yeah. do a speed round of Willet Cannon. Now, right. um, you actually do, I think you do all the Willet Cannons, right? I don't I don't remember seeing one with well, you. Well, the digital me does all the <laughs> Okay, yes. sure. Yes, yes. Okay, so this is real simple. I'm going to read the name of a, uh, a DC animated movie, and you have to tell me if it's part of the DCAU. Pretty sure I have four guaranteed DCAUs and one that it is maybe uh, because it plays with universes. So, you ready? Okay, sure. Okay. The Batman Superman movie. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that was yeah. a gimme. Huh? What? It's, it's in. The, it's in the. Yeah, it's all the same. It's Batman Superman. It's all that stuff. It's yes. It's literally a three episode crossover when they it like, is first three meet. episodes of the Superman cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, the son of Batman. No, that's Phil Barassa, DC, oh my gosh, DC Animated Movie Universe, uh, James Tucker, all that stuff. That's its own continuity. Yeah, no. That, the, cause Next. That, yeah, because <laughs> they, they've kind of like followed Damien through to now he's in the Teen Titans and they're doing the Teen Titans movies. Right, there is no Damien in, in the DCAU. Right. Hashtag keep epilogue a secret. <laughs> <laughs> Justice League versus the Fatal Five. Duh, yes. Bruce yeah. Tim says it's canon. Nothing goes against it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> the death of Superman and the reign of the Supermen. No! <laughs> Get out I, of here. I originally had here um, Superman Doomsday from like back uh -huh, in 2005 yeah. or something. And that I was like, hmm. That one's Bruce Tim style, so I would understand. Yeah. Now, uh, death of Superman stuff, that's also part of the Decamu. Not the not the decal, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. <laughs> okay, so um, Justice League Crisis on Two Earths, which I I kind of feel like ninety five percent but... yes. <laughs> it, it, what? Nine, it it is we yeah we did a whole Willow Cannon episode on that. It is technically not canon, but it was intended to be, and according to the writers, 90 to 95% of it is exactly the script that they had for the DCAU version of the movie. So other than different voice actors and different art style, it's pretty much yes, but okay. it's technically no. <laughs> okay. Well, because I was under the technically no category. Okay, so Batman Harley Quinn. Yes. If you say it's not, you're wrong and stupid. <laughs> No, you're not stupid. You're just misled. Uh, let's go with that. <laughs> okay, so Justice League Gods and Monsters. Because, mm. I mean, this is an Elseworld story. This is kind of like yeah. the same territory as Red Sun. So it's not It's not in the same continuity. Uh, it's not the same universe as the DCAU, but it could be part of the greater DCAU canon as an alternate universe because of a Metron uh related thing that we did a whole video about that if you're watching this you should go watch that <laughs> it's whether the lex luthor from this movie is the metron that we see in justice league unlimited right so batman beyond return of the joker yes because it legit is a, uh, <laughs> a movie of the based on the series so yeah, I mean, it, yeah. real quick it's funny that we're doing it this way with all these ones that are supposedly obvious because there's people that will still be like, will you do a Willow Cannon on Sub-Zero or, you know, something like that that's like, yeah, no, we're not doing that. It's definitely... <laughs> Why it is it literally, they just said, hey, yeah. we'll take these three episodes from the TV show and yeah, put right. it into a cassette tape and then sell it. Mm -hmm. And it smells so good. Okay, so <laughs> Justice League Flashpoint Paradox. No. The Flashpoint movie itself is not, but according to James Tucker, who produces all of these uh, animated non-DCAU movies, uh, he the Flashpoint movie created the universe of the DCAMU, which is stuff like you mentioned, uh, <clears throat> Batman or Son of Batman and Death of Superman, that kind of stuff, um, but is not. <laughs> This is take this takes too long to explain. Uh, hey, you're gonna have to explain what DCAMU is that. for some people. Yes, it created the Decamu, but it's not part of the Decamu. So the same may be able to be said about the DCAU. Who knows? 
I don't know. <laughs> so here is the one I have a strict maybe on because um, I think it could be potentially okay. Teen Titans Go versus Teen Titans. Now you, <laughs> you've had the video saying Teen Titans not canon, Teen Titans Go right. obviously not canon, but in this multi universal uh, crossover, potentially a, t- a canon Teen Titans could have been there. Right. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of silhouetted, hidden Teen Titans in the final battle. Uh, there very well could have been the DCAU Titans that we have hinted at in Static Shock, uh, which is another DCAU show. Um, but we we may never know. There's also um, a Batman the Animated Series. Batman appears uh, in a sort of flashback uh, you know, narrative kind of a thing going on near the start of the movie. Uh, and the fact that there's all these different universes that were not connected before that are now all part of the same multiverse. The DCAU is connected to some of those other ones. So they're all technically in the same multiverse as each other. Uh, But I wouldn't count it as, you know, part of the DCAU really it's, but it could, it's still vaguely connected. Yeah. Okay. And that was it. So, yeah, um, okay. what you yeah. said matched exactly with the... Because I, I, again, watched a number of your videos just to make sure I had it right. Uh-huh. Uh, the, what do you think of the Harley Quinn series and DC Universe right, right now? Where, where is actually, that at? I have only watched two episodes of it, I'm sorry to say. Oh, I'm tired and want... I just haven't finished. <laughs> yeah, well, so I know that, you know, it just got renewed for a second season, like immediately. It's like it's going to be starting pretty soon. So it must be good. I've heard all sorts of good things. I watched the first episode and it, it felt like a, oh, this might not be for me kind of a thing. But I've heard if you give it a couple episodes, it gets a lot better. I am interested in watching it at some point, but I haven't yet. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, is, it, is, it does truly switch to a more adult, like, yeah. um, I don't want to say it's comedy, obviously, but uh, it deals with real adult issues. Sure. So, and yeah. it's hyper violent. There's a lot of swears. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but if you throw that away and forget that it's Penny doing the voice, you know, from Big Bang Theory, uh, and then you go, oh, okay, this is pretty good. Now, I was having a debate with somebody about uh, which Big Bang Theory star did the better voice of Harley, because <laughs> uh, Bernadette did the voice right. for the Harley Quinn movie or the uh, Batman yes. Harley Quinn movie. So I'm kind of in the air. I don't know. <laughs> but, I would. I definitely like Melissa Rauch. Rauch, however you say it. Uh, Rauch. Better. Yeah. yeah. I like her better just because she actually kind of attempted to do the you know Arlene Sorkin accent uh, versus the Harley Quinn series is just Penny talking like. Right. <laughs> you know, I mean, okay. Not a character, but, yeah, it is uh, basically Penny talking. You're right. I, now that I'm hearing it in my head. Uh, because yeah. I was like, well, I didn't know Tara Strong had started doing Harley's voice uh, for like the video games. And I was like, why does her voice sound off when I'm yeah. playing the Batman Arkham games? I'm like, Ugh. yeah, well, the, I, whichever one that she took over from first from Arlene Sorkin, because I believe Arlene Sorkin is Harley in Batman Arkham Asylum, the first one. And then I think from there on, it's Tara Strong. Tara Strong initially, you know, she's very versatile. She does thousands of car- cartoon characters. Uh, she originally was doing like a an, an Arlene Sorkin impression that was pretty good, and then when they kept bringing her back for more and more games and movies and everything, she's kind of become she's made it her own, which is good. But I don't like it as much as the original. And I think that the Melissa Rauch version is more more like the original than Tara Strong's current version. So that's why I like it. Yeah, because when Tara Strong does Harley's voice, all I can hear is Unikitty. Right, yeah, or Timmy Turner or... <laughs> right, that's just... It's Double like when Kath Seuss does a character. voice. It's always one of the kids from Rugrats. Right, exactly. All okay. right. So um, thank you for talking to me today. Yeah. And uh, again, everybody, check out the DCAU Watchtower Database. Uh, mm-hmm. They cover more than just the DCAU. Uh, via <laughs> via, via uh, YouTube, but of course you can catch their social media on Facebook and Twitter and pretty much uh, anywhere you use social media. Right. So, yeah, so thanks, James, for being on here. And, uh, Thank you for having me, yeah. Goodbye, everybody. Please remember <laughs> to like and subscribe and then go to their thing and like and subscribe. And then when yeah. you're done, do use your other account to also like and subscribe everything. Yeah. So we'll get two likes and subscribes from you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then tell your friends, and then we'll get their likes and subscribes. Yes. Right. Okay. 
So uh, <laughs> goodbye, everybody. Bye.